Hello food fans, we're going to have a delightful meal today. We're going to use the pressure cooker. It'll be sort of a combination of lunch, supper, and uh, maybe some leftovers for the next couple of days. These are uh, chicken breast tenderloins. I bought these a long ago, probably about a month or two ago, and had them in the freezer. I used, uh, I think, uh, one or two to make a meal. And these are skinless, boneless, so it's all meat, all lean meat. It will be uh, very uh, good tasting and also uh, nutritious for us. And this cost, uh, I think it's $4, I know it was $4.80, it says right on it, $4.80, and there were four of the uh, chicken breasts in there. And I'm going to use two of them today, and uh, I used two before, so they'll be gone. They'll be gone, we'll say bye-bye to them. We're also going to have some carrots in the mix. As I say, we'll fix these in the pressure cooker. We'll have some potatoes, I've got a couple of potatoes here. And we'll use a little tiny bit of an onion. And now these probably would cost about twice as much at the store as they did a couple of months ago. Hopefully this uh, inflated price caused by a uh, shortage in the supply chain, whatever that all uh, works out to become. I hope it uh, improves rapidly and that we all have reasonable prices in the future, but who knows what will happen. We're going to enjoy it while we can. So, let's get started! And there actually were several uh, pieces in there, like four pieces of uh, chicken, chicken breast. And whatever it was, uh, I used the entire package. And we're going to have meals for three days with this. Here's the uh, potato I'm going to uh, start chopping up in there at this time. Potatoes were still cheap the last time I was in the store, but I have no idea if they've gone up in price. But it's one of the lowest cost nutritionally solid foods that you can get. Potatoes are very good and you can quite often get 10 pounds for under four dollars and sometimes under three. And this is a carrot, or was a carrot. Now it's a bunch of pieces of carrots and we'll get it little brother here and chop it up in there. And we will uh, add the other potato and uh, some onion there and the heat is on under the pan and this is a pressure cooker so be careful if you use a pressure cooker don't let the steam release become clogged and keep the uh, parents keep your children away from the stove and we will let this uh, cook and simmer and get hot and get good tasting and mixed uh, flavors there real Slowly, it'll probably take an hour to cook this. I have about a half a cup of water in there that will provide steam and uh, some of the vegetable nutrients and the meat nutrients in there will turn into water as the heat builds up and it will build up steam pressure. I'll have the lid on the pan. And then I will have a weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, a weight on the um, lid that bounces up and down and lets me know when it is ready to turn out the heat. So we will let this cook and be back in a little bit. And the pressure cooker is making a little bit of noise. It's telling me that it's really steam cooking all the vegetables and meat inside. And I'm going to uh, let it wobble and make noise for probably a minute or two or three. And I'll turn off the heat and sit back and wait for about uh, seven or eight minutes before I take the lid off the pan. And the noise has stopped. Let's see if we've still got steam built up in there. Quite a bit. I'll release the steam slowly and then we'll be ready to eat. And I took the weight off the lid and we'll turn it slowly. 
keep the kids away from the stove, parents. Keep the kids away from the stove. This is opening and there's going to be a lot of steam pop out. And that is going to be tender and ready to eat right now. This all looks good, and I'm going to have my salad, by the way, for those of you who are brand new here. My salad consists of cabbage and carrots. Uh, usually I'd have tomatoes, but uh, I don't have any tomatoes in the house right now. And since it's snowing outside, I'm not going to go out to get any tomatoes. But cabbage, carrots, and I have mayonnaise, relish, and ketchup. this every day and it just tastes good maybe I've just gotten used to the taste the uh, meat potatoes carrots onion that I've cooked is going to be tender it's going to be hot too so let it cool down just a smidgen here. What I will do, I'll eat a nice big meal of this here today. Save the um, pan of leftovers. There will be leftovers. There's how the meat comes out. It's just as tender as can be. Practically falls apart. Pressure cooking is a uh, good way to fix food. There's the meat. Let me try this. This is uh, chicken breast with uh, the flavorings from the vegetables uh, with which it cooked. Very, very tender. Very, very tasty. And I will have a big meal today. I'll have a big meal tomorrow the same items, the very same thing that just is cooked here and was kept in the refrigerator overnight. But I'll have it for uh, lunch tomorrow. And then the third day, uh, after putting the pan back into the refrigerator after the second day, I will have uh, the juices from the meat and the potatoes and the carrots and the onion. I'll have that that I will cook on the stove and use for cooking pasta and it will be delicious. It will be far better than the canned chicken noodle soups. Potato is just so good. Potatoes might be the way to go if there is a uh, bit of a supply chain shortage in food items. I got some carrots here that I can devour. Thank you, by the way, for uh, being here. The, the subscriber numbers are continuing to go up. Uh, 325,000, I think, right now. I won't read the names. There's uh, some chicken. Mmm. I am so fortunate. 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 The economy is a bit of a mess at the moment. Hopefully it will get better. We don't know. Root beer. Root beer still tastes good and it still looks the same. And <clears throat> talk about some of the movies I worked in and who I worked with, with whom I worked. Certainly Dear John was the greatest thing I worked in, the 
there was a TV series on NBC from 1988 to 1992, and then in syndication from 1992 until now. Judd Hirsch was a star. He's a wonderful person. We filmed at Paramount. I watched a movie this past week that had had been made at Paramount in the 1980s. And I got to see some of the old buildings there at Paramount that they showed in the movie. It was Mommy Dearest with Faye Dunaway playing part of Joan Crawford. I don't know how true and accurate the story is. I guess it was written by Joan Crawford's daughter. And it was an interesting look at Hollywood from an angle that I would never imagine looking at it from that perspective. The child of a movie star but it's not the real child, it's the adopted child. And uh, apparently, if some of it is accurate, Joan Crawford had an interesting personality. It was a well made movie. Carrot, potatoes. Mm. I'm going to stir it just a little bit more so it'll cool down a little bit faster. And at Paramount, they had quite a few what they call three camera shows, but they're actually four camera shows. And I worked on Happy Days there at Paramount. I worked on Family Ties at Paramount. Let me get some of my salad. So on Happy Days, Jerry Paris was the uh, director. I think he directed most of the Happy Days episodes. And Marianne Ross was one of the actresses. Uh, Scott Bayo was one of the actors on the show I worked. Frankie Avalon was guest star. And uh, Henry Winkler, playing the part of the Fonz, did a scene with me. I was Abe Lincoln. Annette Funicello and James Darren came by to take Frankie Avalon to lunch that day. Well, it was three days of work, but one day that Frankie Avalon was taken to lunch by James Darren and uh, Annette Funicello. Did you know that Annette had some hit records? She was a singer for a while. She supposedly was going out on dates with Paul Anka. I think Pineapple Princess might have been her big hit. More food. Also at Paramount I worked with Robert Mitchum. Got to hear him sing on the set. He was fun, a lot of fun to work with. Uh, he did not take the world seriously. He just had a good time while he was here. I talked with him. I talked with Warren Beatty. I think that was also at Paramount uh, 
Warren Beatty and Reds. I think we did the audition at the Goldwyn Studios where Warren Beatty chose me to work in Reds from a group of people on stage. He uh, chose a lot of people, but uh, he did choose me first. That was nice of him. And it was very nice working with Warren Beatty. He chatted with whoever was nearby. He was a very pleasant person to work with. More salad. The snow outside is on the lawn, but not on the streets. The streets are wet and slick. And the snow on the lawn will be gone probably overnight, anyway. A bit solid. I think we did work at uh, Paramount Ranch for uh, Warren Beatty's Reds movie. I was in a fight scene in a barn. Mmm, salad's gone. Salad's good. Root beer time. I could also have um, wheat bread with this and have a sandwich, but I don't want the sandwich today. I just want the good hot food on a cold day. Cold day for Tennessee. Universal was another lot where I enjoyed working. Worked at uh, Universal sort of outside. We weren't on a s stage. We were outside, but we were still on the lot of Universal on uh, the show Psycho 2, which is a pretty good movie. Uh, Psycho 2, I would recommend as a movie to see. I was a grave digger in that uh, show in one scene where they supposedly bring uh, Norman Bates' mom back up out of the ground. I was one of the four grave diggers. Let me get some more meat here. This meat is very, very, very tender and it just chops up so easily with a spoon. It's all meat. Hopefully the supply chain does not become any sort of major problem. I do recommend, if they don't have what you want, look around and get uh, whatever is available that is edible. Hopefully a lot of you did buy a few weeks supply of food back about a year ago when I first recommended that. Don't hoard food. Don't, don't buy a thousand cans of something and try to charge your neighbors double the price. That's not the way to invest. By the way, I do have a stock market channel. I have Feature Man Stocks. If you have not checked that out, if you like the stock market, the Feature Man Stocks is my stock market channel. I'm working on a couple other channels. A 
good, good, good stuff. More root beer. Root beer is definitely one of my favorite beverages. Perhaps my favorite. I enjoyed working at MGM. I worked there on um, Fame, TV series Fame, and also on Cannery Row, and also on Pennies from Heaven. Any of you who are planning on getting into show business, I recommend doing it. Become what you want to be. Go where you want to go and be what you want to be. It's a way to have a pleasant life. I've, I've been very fortunate now, so hopefully you will have good health like I've had all my life. another potato here and a carrot. I washed the potatoes before I chopped them up and never peel the potatoes. Potato peeling has a good flavor. This is going to become leftovers. Also worked at Fox Studios, Century City, I guess is where they're located. Where Motor Avenue meets something. Is it Olympic? I'm not sure. The Fox is where I happened to be. I was working there when I heard about the Dear John auditions, waiting to use the phone. Moonlighting was done there. I didn't work moonlighting. I worked the day the bubble burst there. There was a TV movie about the stock market crash in 1929. And it was a fun movie to work, but uh, it never became popular. They showed it on TV, and then it just sort of disappeared the day the bubble burst. Robert Vaughn was one of the actors in that. I had been in the Army with Robert Vaughn. 1958, when I uh, enlisted in the Army, Robert Vaughn was in the Army Reserve unit that um, I enlisted in, the 63rd Infantry Division. Um, get my secret dessert here. Here it is. Secret dessert. This is blueberry. Blueberry yogurt. We'll try this. Anyway, I worked with Robert Vaughn at Fox and uh, some of the other people. Ray Stevens was at Fox one time when I was working there. I didn't work with him, but he happened to be coming out the door of a stage as I was going into it, and he said hello. Ray Stevens, if you don't know who he is, he was a, or still is, a singer, musician, had a lot of hit records, <clears throat> different labels, a lot of comedy records. He had Get Tarzan, Harry the Harry Ape. He was uh, 
he had the streak. I think the streak got to number one. Uh, he also had normal songs. Uh, songs are just real songs. He had everything is beautiful. It was uh, one of his hits. Blueberry yogurt. Mm. Almost every celebrity, I, <coughs> celebrity, celebrity I've met has had uh, a nice personality. I think that's part of what helps a person become selected for a certain role in a certain show, being able to get along well with other people. Blueberry yogurt, the chicken prepared in a pressure cooker. That is a very good meal. I highly recommend it. And uh, thank you very much for joining me, and thank you very much for watching.